Kampala residents continue to throng KCCA gazetted vaccination centers to receive their COVID-19 jabs. It is now a week since Uganda procured her first Johnson & Johnson vaccine, the first ever to be, brought, to be bought rather, using her funds to boost the quantities to sustain the vaccination exercise. We have more details on this report. The Ministry of Health recently resumed mass vaccination in Kampala Capital City Authority, KCCA, gazetted vaccination centers aimed at covering at least 4 million Ugandans. In Kampala divisions, the turn up of persons seeking to be vaccinated has been overwhelming since the exercise resumed on 11th October. At Old Taxi Park Vaccination Center, over 6,500 persons have so far been vaccinated with at least 2,000 taking the jobs on a daily basis. At State Square Vaccination Center, the turn up is equally impressive. Those who received their first jobs shared their experiences and called upon the public to embrace the exercise. I advise all people outside there, come and get the immunization of COVID-19. It is good, you can't travel anywhere without immunization. Yeah, that's How do you feel after receiving your job? I feel well, no problem. I, I don't have any problem. <laughs> Mark Shon Bay Hospital, Rosilla Prison's medical doctor, Ronald Murungu, shares statistics of those registered at State Square Vaccination Center since mass vaccination commenced on 11th October. Because when we began here alone, about 400, we have been rising to 700, we have been rising to 900. But when you compare down in the old tax park, we are over 2,000 per day. So which meaning the rain hasn't affected. Okay? Yes. And most of these are the people working in the arcades, border borders, taxi drivers, those who have their business within the center, though KCCA has gazetted areas in their divisions, and vaccination there is ongoing. And also there is a massive turnout. Johnson and Johnson vaccines have been given to those receiving their first jabs with Pfizer and AstraZeneca vaccines being administered to those attending their second dose. Adiana Kuti and Ivan Juko, UBC. Members of the Parliamentary Forum for Children have been challenged to come up with a legislative agenda to address the plight of children in Uganda. The Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Bolanya, emphasizes the need to shift from rhetoric to action in finding lasting solutions to challenge to the challenges faced by children. He was speaking at Serenachigo during the opening of a two-day workshop for members of Parliament sitting on the Parliamentary Forum for Children. These are the details. So children are proud. Children are God's way of sustaining humanity, his own image. We must never interfere with it. Stigmatized by society and neglected by parents, the plight of children remains everyone's concern in Uganda. This was emphasized during an orientation workshop for members of the Parliamentary Forum on Children. This leads some of us to find comfort in harmful behaviors such as drug and substance abuse and engage in crime to survive. It is our oversight function as members of parliament to keep the executive arm of government accountable on various programs and projects. Unfortunately, even respectable members of society have been cited in abuse of children. This, according to members of parliament, sends a bad example. Another one neglected the son, and the child, the boy, is a border border rider, but the father is a member of parliament. We shall not allow this, right honorable speaker. I'm glad I'm here. We shall work together, and if they don't sign up, we shall expose them. It's also very ashamed and very alarming to hear that. There are some male legislators who have abandoned their duties. They have produced the children, 
and some of them are abandoning the responsibility of helping their children. I think that is the worst scenario in this country. This kind of situation is said to be worsened by the COVID-19 lockdown that has seen schools closed for nearly two years. What they know best is to discuss about love affairs. Girls, when they are going to fetch water, they discuss about their boyfriends. For the boys, they have nothing to do apart from discussing how to convince a girl child. We are having a very idle men. Men have been idle. They are coming back home early. Some are even ending up defiling their own children. So we need to act very fast as a, as a country, as a government. We need to find a way of uh, protecting our children. When we continue keeping children at home, they become so redundant. They become so demoralized. That is why many of them are getting pregnant. So let the schools be open. But other than enumerate challenges, solutions have to be found. Finding a way to deal with birth certificate in the light of disputed fatherhood is very important and it rests on you, ladies and gentlemen. No one else can make the change in the legislation but you. All these speeches about all oh, children, all oh, remand homes, oh. you see, they are symptomatic discussions. We're not dealing with the real problem. The real problem is how do you change those families to make them more active and capable of supporting those children to keep them off the streets. The Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Olanya, wants formulation of a legal framework and legislative agenda for promoting the welfare of children. Give me a legislative agenda. Tell me the kind of problems to have, which, can, which ones can be dealt with by petitions, motions, bills. Tell me. I want to hear. Stop discouraging me with your infectious negative sentiments. Give me a reason to fight on. I know that you are fighting along with me. The Parliamentary Forum for Children is a lobby group initiated by the 7th Parliament. It is committed to upholding the rights of children with their motto, being children first. Henry Okrut, UBC. Buganda Road Magistrate's Court has slapped a fresh charge of inciting violence against Kawempe North Member of Parliament Mohamed Sejirinya. Prosecution alleges that Sejirinya committed the offence online using his Facebook page. The accused, who appeared via video conferencing before Grade 1 Magistrate Dorin Ogu Karunji, pleaded not guilty to the alleged offence. Kawempe North Member of Parliament Muhammad Segilinya has been slapped with new charges of inciting violence. You made statements on your Facebook page, Segilinya Muhammad fans page, calculated to incite the public to participate in violence against some section or group of Uganda population to wit. I am warning those who are trying to assassinate Honorable Robert Chiagula in St. What will happen will be for the times worse than the 1994 Rwandan genocide. Prosecution led by Judith Nyinamu is informed court that inquiries are still ongoing, thus requesting court for more time. Although Muhammad Seglenya's lawyers had requested for the case file to prepare his defense, this was objected by the prosecution when she informed the court that the file was still in police custody. We pray that this court prevents over the prosecution to expedite inquiries in this matter. During the session, Muhammad Seglinya's mother, Sanyu Nakajumba, just cried in court after seeing the unpleasing health status of his son. <laughs> Kampala woman member of parliament, Shamim Malende, 
is the lawyer representing Muhammad Segirinya. And we told people even earlier that Segirinya can hardly walk. Even Honorable Sewanyanda, they can hardly walk. They, are, they can't walk on their own. So the conditions of their families are also not good. Everyone is weeping, everyone is crying out. You know, it's now not about Honorable Segirinya, it's not about politics, it's not about, but this is about life and health. Let's preserve life, let's preserve health, and then we can talk cases later. Prosecution alleges that the accused committed the offences online using his Facebook page. Court will resume on 29th October 2021. Formation of the case. Deborah Nama Maonde, Nantongo Rebeka, UBC News. Mubende district leadership has welcomed the tarmacking of municipal roads for their area's facelift. This was during the groundbreaking ceremony for the USMID in the district at an event officiated by the Minister for Land and Urban Development, Judith Nabakova. The Minister for Lands and Urban Development, Judith Nabakova, has inaugurated a multi-billion road project in Mubende district. The road construction project under Uganda support to infrastructure development is supervised by the Minister of Lands. We have Kabayega Kasana Road of 0.843 kilometers at 4.6 billion. The works are in progress. The reason for the program is a program for results. You get resources according to how you have performed. And I'm happy to note that Mubende hit the road running you have been performing well. I thank the mayor, the town clerk, and the fraternity of Mubende for this. The event was attended by the district woman MP, municipal mayor, town clerk, the RDC, and area residents. Honorable Minister, we are expecting the beautification of this town. We are thinking that after this project is done, our town will be so beautiful. Uh, we are also thinking that... Uh, uh, there will be a boosting of local economy because when the roads are good, uh, they also at least make people to work and to do their business well. I would like to assure you that as a chief monitor, with all the teams at my disposal, we'll do our best to monitor value for money works as well as credible works which will stand the test of time. The district leadership, however, still believes this is a drop in the ocean as the municipality is rapidly urbanizing. I want to again thank the government of Uganda, the NRM government, for choosing Murende municipality and Murende district at large as one of the municipalities that are going to benefit from this project. Judith Nabakova emphasizes value for money during the rehabilitation and construction of such roads. This is a project of results. You are now going into a mock assessment exercise. It needs a lot of work, a lot of teamwork, a lot of preparation. Whenever you get the 90, you've been talking about. Local leaders, however, reminded the Minister of Continued Land Evictions in the district. Robert Onyango. UBC News. A local defense unit officer, Mamouli Rashid, has been sentenced to five years in prison after being convicted on charges of manslaughter when he killed the Uganda Broadcasting Corporation employee Robert Kagolo. Ma Mamouli, Mumuli rather, Rashid was convicted on his plea of guilt after confirming to the court that he accidentally shot and killed the deceased Robert Kagolo. A security operative suspected of shooting and killing Uganda Broadcasting Corporation employee Robert Kagolo at Kasengeje in Mokiso district has been charged. Mamuli Rashid, a local defense unit officer, pleaded guilty to the alleged offense. He was charged with one count of murdering Robert Kagolo. The presiding chairman, Kachiri Division Court Marshal, Colonel Samuel Mojenyi, convicted Mamuli Rashid on his pleas of guilt. 
the chairman Kachiri Division 1 Court Marshal Colonel Samuel Mojenyi sentenced the convict Mamuli Rashid a five years in prison on the count of manslaughter. Finding, therefore, it is the finding of this court that the accused did not have malsafazal or intention of killing Mr. Kagol. This court, therefore, reduces conviction from murder to manslaughter. The Uganda People's Defense Forces pledged to look after Robert Kagolo's family. He has already been briefed how it can be helped. There is a procedure they have to go through. They have to come back to UPDF and we shall guide them how they can be helped as far as compensation is concerned. Uh, it was a very unfortunate incident, but as I told you, it was not intention. That's why it was manslaughter. And uh, may the soul of Mr. Robert Kagolo rest in eternal peace. In court, the accused was represented by counsel Miriam Kansime and prosecution was represented by Captain Paul Rabogo. The Uganda Broadcasting Corporation employee, Robert Kagolo, was murdered by Mamuli Rashid at Kasengeje village in Wakiso district when he was returning from his brother's burial in Gomba district. Report compiled by Ongeso Godwin Mark and Namamonde Deborah for UBC News in Wakiso. Furthermore, the Pope of the Orthodox Church is in Gulu City ahead of the prayers this weekend. The Pope and the Patriarch of Alexandria and all Africa Theodro II will this Saturday hold prayers at the headquarters of the Orthodox Church in Gulu and Eastern Uganda. The Pope blessed the Gulu City Mayor Alfred Okwonga and the memorabilia. The Gulu City Mayor Alfred Okwanga sees the visit of the Pope as an opportunity for the young city to welcome more prominent visitors. The Pope met worshippers at St. Basilica in Laibi where he joined the Choli traditional dancers performing the Lara Karaka dance. He then proceeded to St. Nectario Orthodox Church in Akonyibedo. The Patriarch already has uh, students from Gulu who are studying in Alexandria, uh, who is grooming them and sending them back to Gulu. He thanks also the President of the country who is hosting him. Uh, that's why from the first time that he came here in 2006, he after decided to make it a diocese. We are a church of love, a church of services, and it will be a great joy for us to do something for Bullshit. And the blessing that he has given to this city, I'm really very hopeful that Gulu City is going to grow and will be one of the best cities in the world. Uh, we are pledged as the city leadership, our full support to work with all the religious leaders and to work very closely with the Orthodox Church together with other churches so that we develop this community. I'm seeing over times 
the followers of the Orthodox Church is growing in Gulu City. That means the message that they are giving to uh, the flocks are the good message. That is why people are coming and joining uh, the churches, Orthodox Church. And we are requesting them now that the number of the followers are increasing. I requested the hope to increase also construction of more churches. A new committee has been appointed to carry out a conclusive survey of a contested land between Chambogo University and the Chisoso Nkole family in Chambogo. Now the following, the, this followed a mapping and survey supervised by the senior lands officer Wilson Ogalo and this was disclosed at a meeting held at the State House Anti-Corruption Unit offices in Kampala. A 46-acre chunk of land is giving sleepless nights between Chambogo University and the Chisosongkole family private estates. The land located between Porot 50, block number 234 Chadondo, is where Chambogo College, Chambogo Primary School, National Curriculum Development Center, Chambogo Farm and Education Service Agencies are situated. Although a survey was conducted earlier to ascertain the right own of this land, stakeholders were disappointed. When they got to know that the survey report was tampered with. And what he's saying is the issue of compensation was never part of that report. Yes. And it should not come up. It should not in come up in the, in the minutes of the discussion of the report. Our point is that we need to resolve how the government agencies have occupied that land since the 1950s such that we resolve the issues of ownership between government and uh, the Buganda Kingdom. The issue of compensation was smuggled in by those who may be having their personal interests and it will be investigated. A senior officer from the Minister of Lands, Wilson Ogalo, pointed out the findings. They were, they, the survey team and then the, and then the value, evaluation team are ready to start the work and communication has already been communicated to the, the vice chancellor for us to do that work. The Buganda Kingdom Attorney General, Christopher Abuanika, also did not agree with the issue of compensating the so a family. And my, my, my thinking is that it's the Commissioner of Land Registration mm. who keeps custody of these records, mm. because the Commissioner surveys has given us there. Uh, let, 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 let us get uh, the available information and look for it. This has prompted stockholders to appoint a new committee to carry out another survey on this land. So we put up a committee that is going to give us the final report on the stand or on the ownership or, and the occupants, uh, how they came on that land, how those institutions of government came on the land, and uh, that report will be presented to the entire um, to all of us that were in the meeting on the 11th of November and uh, that's when we shall have to agree on the brief that we shall write to His Excellency the President. The new committee is comprised of representatives from Chambogo University, Uganda Land Commission, Buganda Land Board, Minister of Lands and Urban Development, Minister of Education and State House and Corruption Unit, the Vice Chancellor at Chambogo University, Professor Erika Tunguka, dismissed allegations of personal interest. Minister of Education, Minister of Lands, Uganda Land Commission and Agencies must help this committee and must help government to know how these institutions came to be there and how come that no objection has been raised. This was disclosed during a joint meeting with other concerned stakeholders. On the land in question, Chambogo University claims that they acquired this land in 1962. However, this was dismissed by the Chisongkole family that is claiming the ownership of the land. Deborah Namamonde, Irene Nakong, UBC News. And that takes us for a short commercial break. When we return, we'll be back with more news tonight. Stay tuned. <music> Today in history. On the 15th of October 1979, 
then governor of Central Province, Major Abdul Nasur, the girls out of their accommodation in Kampala. This came after Nasur had found the girls throwing rubbish from a flat. He caught the girls throwing rubbish through the windows to the streets and ordered the girls to pack up and go to their parents. My home, I smile when I think of you, Uganda. My home. My home, I dance when I look at you, Uganda. My home, oh my Uganda. I know, with you I'll always stay forever. I know, I know, because I feel that we belong together. My home, my home, under the sun so bright, under the moon at night, on my heart. MTM, we look forward to starting another exciting journey together to grow our home, Uganda. from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or give. Get freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smartphone network. Getting Go TV was the best decision James has ever made. Finding a good place to watch football was never easy, but it was costly until James discovered something big. Now he can finally enjoy the benefits of homegrown advantage with a decoder and one month of Go TV value. For just 25,000 shillings, enjoy the world's biggest leagues and cap competitions. Go TV Uganda. Love it. Hello, welcome back. You're still watching the UBC News tonight. More news. The Minister for Water and Environment, Sam Chaptoris, has urged stakeholders to work closely with government to promote hygiene among Ugandans. The minister was addressing different stakeholders as they conveyed to celebrate the Global Hand Washing Day. We need mindset change. Stakeholders promoting hygiene have commemorated the Global Hand Washing Day at the Ministry of Water and Environment Headquarters in Luzira. Uganda's hand washing performance remains low despite an increase in vigilance and appreciation by the public to wash hands. In 2007, of Ugandans washing their hands with soap and water to a current 44.7% and 54.7% in rural and urban areas, respectively. Ladies and gentlemen, those figures still look miserable and they are below what we want to achieve. The Ministry of Environment has given out over 1,000 reading material, trained over 400 ambassadors, and translated hygiene messages into local languages to create awareness on hand washing. In Uganda, we started with six, now we have moved 
and we have also asked those ones who have not reached because we had challenges in some areas. Two languages are very similar, but when you write it down, they become different. They can understand each other. We have had to sit with them and see which word we remove, which might not be very useful in your culture, even if people are from the same region. Parliament and cultural institutions representatives have committed to support efforts towards promoting hygiene. So what is very important is for you to tell us what you need us to do. And we coordinate and work together. For instance, if the cost of water is the problem, why don't we start mobilizing? And we make many members of parliament to realize that the cost of water needs to be brought down so that many people will be able to wash their hands. Washing hands should be an obligation to everybody and we shall make sure that we wake up our people not to be complacent. Minister for Water and Environment, Sam Cheptoris, emphasized the need for more sensitization on hygiene-related behaviors. The, the schools should introduce hygiene. When, when, when a patient goes to hospital, when a mother goes to hospital, the first thing is not to to give medicine, but the first thing is to talk to them. How did this child get diarrhea? This year's celebrations have been marked under the theme, the future is at hand, let's move on. Ivan Kahua and Sebira Andrew, UBC News. Religious leaders from six Anglican dioceses in Buganda have also joined the campaign to train and educate communities on the importance of conserving forests. The leaders from Luero, Mitiana, Central Buganda, West Buganda, Namirembe and Mukono rolled out the campaign at Namukozi, Mitiana Diocese in the training supported by Ndeja University. Reverends and Archdeacons from Mitiana Diocese have organized a training workshop aimed at rousing public interest in environment management. Anglican Diocese and Buganda Region Ministers from Luwero, Mitiana, Central Buganda, West Buganda, Namirembe and Mukono organized the training in partnership with Ndeja University. The Bishop of Mitiana Diocese, Dr. James Bukamako said, religious leaders also embarked on sensitizing the communities in environment protection. Bishop Okomeko appealed to reverends and archdeacons to use the skills achieved in the training to train the communities in their localities for the betterment of the country's environment. Uh, this partnership we have with Ndeje University is going to be very important and useful because it is aimed at eradicating poverty and also it is aimed at um, fighting uh, discriminative cutting of trees uh, in order to get firewood and also to burn charcoals which has a very big negative impact on our climate. The Deputy Vice Chancellor and Deja University, Fred Kakembo, said the university will continue to work together with the six Anglican dioceses in Buganda to train communities on the importance of the environment, involved in developmental programs, among other related issues, benefiting them, the church, and the country at large. We have been here on a, a training seminar whereby we are introducing uh, ladies and gentlemen and uh, later with the youth how to make briquettes from uh, waste, how to recycle waste into biofuels, to use in homes, to use in institutions of learning, in hotels and other areas. This is just one of the first sessions we have had. The other sessions will include Introducing skills in the modern agriculture, in the renewable energy, in the water safety. And the two-day training at Namokonzi in Mitiana municipality was attended by over 50 reverends and archdeacons from Mitiana diocese.
Sandra Kahonde, Salongo Kasbante, UBC News. Environment conservation is critical across the board. It is for this reason that stakeholders want all Ugandans to participate in conservation efforts and awareness creation. This was at an event marking the International Waste Day held at Minister's Village, Ntinda, near Kampala. A principal IT officer, Joseph Zimenya, wants all those dealing in electronic transmission products and other related materials to be careful on how they dispose of their waste. This was during the International Electronic Waste Management Day, held at the minister's village in Ntinda, Kampala, suburb. Zimenya says government has set up strategies aimed at saving the environment through the use of e-waste management systems. The government has developed policies and, and strategies and guidelines. And as government, we call upon others to do the sensitization. Zirimanya Joseph says that all stakeholders should get on board so as to enhance the tracking system of the end-user effects caused by electronic waste. When you go on the ministry's website, you can find the e-waste uh, policy of control and find the EU's strategy of 2013 and the guidelines of 20, 2016. These documents can help us as a country fight against the effects of EU and also make mass mobilization so that people can be able to uh, understand the effects of EU The chief executive officer EU West, Samu Ejoba, says electronic waste has a number of threats, especially health hazards, that can be detrimental to both human and animal health. Oh, and appreciate the fact that the gadgets, electronic gadgets, and some of the electronic equipment we use either for personal use or domestically at home or even for commercial purposes. Within them carry lots of very dangerous metals and chemicals like zinc, lead, mercury, and many others. And we are aware that when these elements are thrown around and end up in our water, end up in the soil around our compound, or even when they are burned and then uh, exposed to the atmosphere. A board member, Youth Social Work Association, Miracle, wants all manufacturers and e Western end users to ensure proper disposal of hazardous materials. And here we are appealing to the public, government, private sector, CSOs and NGOs let us collaborate and put our efforts together to ensure that e-waste is not just disposed of, but it is managed in the right way so that we can safeguard both the environment and the lives of our people. Kayumba Steven compiled the report. Government has urged the just inaugurated board members of the 5th National Council for Persons with Disabilities to embrace the National Development Plan during their term of office 2021-2025. The new board members have also been encouraged to follow the daily the Disability Act of 2020 as they monitor challenges and needs for persons with disabilities in the country. The new board members for National Council for Persons with Disabilities have been asked to follow guidelines stipulated in the National Development Plan 3 for strategic development of stakeholders. The Minister for Persons with Disabilities, Grace Helena Samo, was inaugurating the National Council for Persons with Disability Board. She asked the new board to ensure equal access and opportunities for persons with disabilities. When you appear, people look at you like you are unable. But it's upon us as people with disabilities to begin showing people that we are capable. And I think the interventions the government is doing will help to uplift the standards of people with disabilities. And they will automatically get into leadership. They will economically be empowered. The minister urged council members to ensure persons living with disabilities embrace the parish development model for better livelihoods. But I think government now comes with the interventions of programs like Operation Wealth Creation. I talked about the special grant for people with disabilities. This grant is given to disabled people to do economic empowerment activities to a tune of about five million for about five people. That kind of program and intervention the government is doing is going to help them. We have also discussed that in the parish model, 
as we move towards that, that the persons with disabilities will be recognized at the parish and be given support. The minister also advised members to ensure research and innovation skills are embraced by all as part of their support to persons with disabilities. We have another challenge of mobility appliances because you see people with disabilities, they use wheelchairs, these sticks they use when they are walking. Those disability appliances are very expensive. And we even have orthopedic workshops at each, most of the regional referral hospitals, but they are non-functional. So as the new committee, we want to request the government to fund those orthopedic workshops. Going, we're going to go into research and innovations because the world has gone uh, digital and persons with disabilities, depending on which degree they, they have, are being left behind in the digital world. National Council leaders were asked to mobilize for more funding to the persons with disabilities since their grant is not sufficient for all their needs. Sandra Kahunde, UBC News. I smile when I think of you, Uganda, my home. My home, I dance when I look at you, Uganda, my home. Oh, my Uganda. I know with you I'll always stay forever. I know, I know. Because I feel that we belong together, my home. MTN, we look forward to starting another exciting journey together to grow our home, Uganda. The Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, together with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the National Agriculture Research Organization and partners will host this year's World Food Day commemoration at National Agriculture Research Laboratories in Kawanda on Saturday, 16th of October, 2021, under the theme, Our Actions Are Our Future, Better Production, Better Nutrition, A Better Environment and A Better Life. The National World Food Day event is by invite only, but the they can join the activities on TV and on social media using hashtag World Food Day. Remember that every year, one third of all food is lost or wasted. When we waste food, we also waste the labor, energy and previous resources used to produce it. To feed everyone, we need to transform the way we grow and consume food. Let's start today. Eat local, eat seasonal and eat sustainably to safeguard our future food. Our actions, our future. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or gift. Get freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smart phone network. Welcome back. It's now time for business. Nita U has officially handed over an online portal to the Ministry of Internal Affairs that amalgamates all its services for quality service delivery. The portal is part of the innovations that Nita U is rolling out on the national IT backbone infrastructure that was established to digitize all government services. I had the privilege to witness the handover. The Ministry of Internal Affairs has received an e-portal courtesy of Nita U. This has come at a time when the Ministry of Internal Affairs is decentralizing its services to various regions of the country to hasten service delivery while reducing the number of people the headquarters hosts. At the height of COVID, 
before COVID, we had reached 1,700 people enrolling. That is enrolling alone. If you do, if you add almost equal number to pick the passports, passports alone, you are, you are talking of 3,000 people in one compound. So that's why we are emphasizing, number one, regions. Number two, going to missions. Number three, digital. For decades, unscrupulous middlemen have been defrauding ignorant citizens who seek the ministry's services, but the new portal will reduce this approach to a greater extent. The biggest complaints are for this uh, uh, middlemen, this uh, crowds to monopolize that uh, lack of information, the information gap. So they will keep there waiting for you in the line and they have been taking people's money. But you don't have to do that. You log on to the system and you pay online. The Ministry of Internal Affairs is calling on the public to utilize the system and only come to a physical office when required. We've been having uh, three portals, uh, the main website, the passport portal, the immigration services, which are also many. So this endeavor is to bring all those services together in one website. Anybody who wants to reach us will reach us through that one website. NITAU is targeting to connect all government MDAs onto the national IT backbone infrastructure by 2030, but insists that sufficient funding is a prerequisite to achieve this goal. Wadulo Makanold, UBC News. The United Nations World Food Program is to support more than 530,000 refugees in northwest Uganda settlements with a food ration covering 70% of their nutrition needs. This has been revealed by Patience Akumu, the program policy officer at the World Food Program Uganda. Over 200 farmers in Kabale district have been sensitized on how to improve their agriculture practices at an event held at Kachwekano Zono Agricultural Research and Development Institute. We think there should exist land like this allocated for research, for something that serves humanity. And then you know of this generation, then you go now and abuse. And then you say your ancestor was illiterate and for you are advanced. <laughs> so those are the challenges. During the event, officials from the World Food Program disclosed that their organization is committed to supporting more than 53,000 refugees in the settlements of Ajumani, Kiriandongo, and Palabek. If what we have seen can make people appreciate, now if we would get enhanced funding or increased funding, we would be doing better. The executive director notes Dr. Samuel Mogasi asked the farmers and leaders in Chigezi subregion to advocate for conservation of wetlands and tree cover in the area for sustainable rainfall. About 30, 40 years ago, Chigezi and Kabali used to be extremely cold. We used to have predictable rains. We used to, you know, used to see you know, fog in the morning. But these days, it's a different story. If you are talking of climate change, you can see it here in, in this part of the country. And we are urging, I'm urging the leaders of this district, how can we preserve the environment in Kigezi? By preserving, first of all, the wetlands, where possible plant mode fields. The management of national research organization also requested governments to support them financially, such that they can carry out more research and educate farmers. When we do research, we generate technologies. These technologies have helped farmers increase their productivity, uh, fight hunger, fight famine, fight poverty, and enhance their nutrition. The farmers were up a bit about the training and hoped for improvements in their agricultural portfolios. The problem is the, the, we, we are facing it is running water just uh, taking our land to the bottom of uh, the, the hills. And uh, I appeal to the government to make sure that they can make by laws and implement them to control our land. 
story compiled by Nelson Akatuhulira for your basic news. <laughs>
Egypt, Ghana are some of the over 30 countries that will contest for the podium finish in the All Africa Badminton Seniors Tournament. David Katende, while launching the contest at National Council of Sports, asserted that government has geared towards ensuring all sports disciplines that are organized will be financially supported. Uh, we have come out committedly to support this cause and we have given all that it requires to make sure that this championship is successfully hosted in the country and as well as ensuring that our national team is fully facilitated to take part in this championship. William Kabindi, head coach, Team Uganda, is optimistic that his players have intensified all the needed tactics that will help see them in the top flight position in the tie. The last few weeks that we've been training, uh, our main target is to perform well. Uh, we are looking at a podium finish. And uh, apart from that, uh, this tournament, these are, there are benefits, of course. As players, uh, they will have to earn points. Uh, that can enable them to play uh, tournaments like the World Championships, uh, Commonwealth and also the Olympics. Uganda's Sidwan and team captain Mbaba Ziglade says they are up to the task. I think we are prepared enough for this tournament because we've given it all our all throughout this session because we even camped and we started using the shuttlecocks that are supposed to be used in the tournament and I think I believe we are acquiring the right touch on the shuttle and with the right consistency and motivation and determination, I believe we shall reach a very good part in the tournament. We shall play very well. Kobgabi Husna, Fadila Shamka, Nalwaza Tracy, Namakoi Mebo and Rajab Shamsha are some of the ladies players. While the men's team consists of Kassidia Brian, Emudu Expedito, Lubegam Zafaru, Mwambu Israel, among others. Uganda will use the tournament to garner points that will see them qualify for the Commonwealth Games that will climax in Bangingham next year. Helen Barbara Jizamba, reporting for ABC TV News. Yes, and that brings us to the end of our 10 o'clock edition this 15th day of October 2021. Let's take a look at the headlines. Brought to you by... How to get points. Just use MTN to make calls, send SMS, load airtime, buy bundles, or pay for MTN subscription services. Everywhere you go, MTN. President Museveni commends the UG, UJCC for uniting followers. Hundreds turn up for COVID-19 jobs in Kampala. Sejirinya slapped a fresh charge for inciting violence. And Uganda to use Tony to garner points for Commonwealth Games. was brought to you by everywhere you go mtn well thank you for having us tonight my name is wadulo mark anod mugalo muhammad on sign language from the team we must say good night and have yourselves a lovely weekend with the update we are still continuing with thunder showers more especially around the lake showers and the western part of our country and seeing the weather report we are having the highest of 44.9 millimeters of rainfall that was across in Tebe. Masaka was 29.4 Gul was 15.5 Rushen was 12.3 Kalengil was 10.8 millimeters of rainfall Seeing the satellite picture, we are having a rainbow over Africa, including our country, Uganda. But inclusive of this, we have the moist winds blowing from the Indian Ocean in combination with moist winds from Congo Airmas meeting within our country, plus the enhanced local activities bring us the weather that we are experiencing lately. Tomorrow morning, though, we expect to wake up with light showers across lake showers and the western part of our country. The northern part of our region towards Karamoja is expected to have sunny intervals. Afternoon hours, we expect a continuation of light showers in the southern part of our country and a continuation of sunny intervals in the northern part of our country. 
temperatures up to 30 degrees over maximum across northern part of our region, 27 across Arua, including our capital city Kampala. Kamal Highlands with the lowest of 23 degrees Celsius, Zoka, Sese, and Imara with 29 degrees Celsius. News moving out of Uganda to wearing the cities across the globe are forecasting light showers across New York with a maximum of 24 degrees Celsius, Nairobi and Paris with cloudy conditions and sunny intervals at a maximum of 27 degrees Celsius across Nairobi, Cairo and Dubai with sunny conditions at a maximum of 34 degrees Celsius across Cairo. Thanks for tuning on New BC. Who wants to see more? You can view our website, Kutesa Mili, it's by name. See you tomorrow. Stay tuned. You, yes, you and I, all of us, have to go green at the workplace to protect the environment. Here are some of the best green practices you need to adopt at the workplace. Ensure responsible waste disposal. Opt for recycled paper and paper products. Conserve energy by switching off lights, air conditioner, and other electronic equipment whenever they're not in use. Use environmentally friendly alternative energy and eco-friendly bulbs. Maximize use of digital solutions and computer software to reduce consumption of paper as you aim to go paperless. Implement green procurement, cycle, walk, hold virtual meetings, work from home, use public transport and do carpooling with colleagues and neighbors, hence reducing emissions. Finally, Raise awareness about these and more green practices and make them a part of your corporate culture. Let's go green now. This is an advocacy message from the Green Jobs Program in the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development. This weekend on UBC. Nelson is a 23-year-old graduate from Kampala International University. At the age of two years, his parents took him to the hospital to get a polio vaccine, but everything turned south. I grew up like any other kid. I was also produced like any other kid. When I met Nelson, his story, the way he used to tell his story, you would see that there's too much zeal in it. You would see that he has a lot, that's where it's coming from. Because growing up at a young age, his situation made him to grow up. People that are living with disabilities, they have their unique abilities that are hidden yes. behind. So, Mr. and Miss Ability is Uganda's first ever confidence building yes. and a beauty pageant aimed at empowering people living with disabilities. All this
We are some youth, eh? revolutionary, you know? Without no music and without ideas on our own. So, it's only natural for we start a fire. So, when you say start a fire, you know? we really, you know, we really are make reference to burning out certain ideologies that have been upholding in society for a very long time, you know? And it is of no good to the upliftment of the people. So we have to start a fire upon them like a folly culture there, you don't know? So, when we say Rome now, it's not geographic. But if I you for the cap, then I you tough it. Let's go and start a fire without fear, brave and bold. Rastafari is my peace of mind. Just thank you for your loving. 